What's up you guys, welcome back to the Options Income Strategies channel here. I've got a quick video here for you today where I will teach you how you can trade call debit spreads in such a way that you would completely eliminate any kind of a downside risk, okay? Now if you're familiar with call debit spreads, you can skip this part, but if you're new to it, I wanted to re review it quickly so that you understand how I'm going about it, okay? So a call debit spread involves buying a call with a lower strike price and then selling a call with a higher strike price such that you have to pay a debit to open that spread, okay? Now this is a bullish strategy where if the price of the stock goes above the call that you sold, then you get to keep uh, the difference in the strike prices as profit on expiration date, okay? Now, let's get into actual examples here. So the way I'm going to, uh, the way I do this trade essentially is instead of buying a call and, uh, instead of buying and selling calls at the same time for a debit, I would first start off by buying calls and the key point here is the call needs to expire at least a few months down the line, okay? So in this case, I'm using Sony as an example here. What I did was I bought the $75 call for a premium of $700, okay? Then I waited a couple of days till June 15, waited for the price of Sony to appreciate, and then I sold two of these $77.50 calls for a premium of $800. Now what that did is it helped it let me lock in at least a hundred dollar profit for this call debit spread but if you remember what how call debit spreads work the call that you sold for a higher strike price is supposed to be worth less than what you bought for which is why it's a debit spread okay but because i waited for it to appreciate and then i sold the call with a higher strike price i've essentially converted this call debit spread into a call credit spread now at now the big advantage of the fact that this is a call debit spread is that irrespective of what happens to the price of sony right now i would have locked in hundred dollars no matter what i do not owe or i do not risk anything else on this trade but if sony does go to 77.50 and above i would collect an additional 500 dollars on expiration date for a total profit of 600 dollars okay now as you can see irrespective of what happens with Sony, there is no more downside risk. That's the key here. But if I had just traded both uh, the call debit spread on the same day, then I would have put in a, pre a certain debit to open that call debit spread, and I would risk that amount if Sony stays below $75. But this way, I've locked in $100, and I don't have to worry about this trade anymore. Okay? Here's another example on a stock called Lumentum. So I bought this $90 call on June 15th. I paid $1340 for two call contracts, waited for, for it to appreciate, and two weeks later on June 30th, I sold the 9250 calls and collected $1620 as a credit. Okay? So so on the same day I wait, I actually sold just one call first for 780 waited for it to appreciate a little more and sold another call for 840 and that's how I got a total credit of $1620. Now, since I paid only 1340 for the $90 calls and got a credit of 1620 for the 9250 calls, I have already locked in a profit of $280. Now, we're, again, irrespective of what happens to Lumentum stock at this point, those that those $280 are mine and I don't owe any more else uh, on this trade, okay? If Lumetum does end up going above 9250, as before, I would collect an additional $500 on top of the 280 that I already locked in for a total profit of $780. But even if that doesn't happen, I've locked in at least $280 now and I don't have any more downside risk left on the stock. Okay, here's one final example here. This is Guggenheim Solar ETF, ticker symbol TAN, one of my favorite solar stocks right now if you're looking for ETFs. Now here what I did was I first bought two of the $38 calls, waited for it to appreciate a little, bought two more $40 calls, waited for it to appreciate a little more, and bought two more $50 calls, okay? Now after all of these, uh, these six calls cost me a total of $1340, okay? Then, but because TAN had already appreciated a lot over the last one month, if you look at the stock price, in the last one month, it has gone up 25.38%. So all of these calls had already gone up a lot, and that was the perfect time for me to sell 
higher strike price calls and turn these into call credit spreads instead of call debit spreads, okay? So I sold two of the $46 calls, two more of these $43 calls, and collected a credit of $1,400. So just by selling four calls against six calls that I bought, I completely got back my initial uh, investment of $1,340 plus a $60 profit. And then I can let these two calls ride depending on how high the stock goes and irrespective of what happens here again, I would have at least locked in $60. But I have pretty strong uh, pretty strong faith in the stock that in this ETF that it's gonna keep going up uh, and outperform the market for sure. And as you can see here, my current profit, if I were to sell everything today is $1820, which is a 3,033% profit, okay? So that's how you, you can sell call debit spreads and completely eliminate downside risk. Now, the reason I say uh, I do this instead of just selling my calls for good profit is because unlike investments where if it goes down, you could uh, low, you can buy more and lower down your average cost basis, options can expire worthless and you can lose all of your initial investment. So that's why if you wait a little bit and then sell some calls to recover your initial investment, there is no more downside risk left for you, but there's only pure upside. Now, if the stock keeps going about 50 and above by January, by January 15, 2021, there's so much more potential to this particular ETF and to this particular trade, okay? So that's all I wanted to share with you guys for today. Uh, next time you're thinking about buying a call debit spread or call credit, call credit spread, think about the strategy. Uh, the Another key you need to do here is that you need to buy calls on a day where the stock is going down. Because when the, when the stock is going down, that's when the premium for calls is lower or it's much lower than it would be if a stock is going up, okay? Buy calls on those days, wait for it to appreciate, sell calls at higher strike prices to recover your initial investment, and now you only have upside left in your trade, okay? I hope that helps you guys. Leave a comment if you have any questions or concerns. And uh, subscribe if you, have, if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time I upload a video. Okay, thank you for watching and until next time.